Hi there, this is David, and Persona 3, back on the PS2, was my first introduction to this very long-running series. This is actually my same copy that I got like 15-something years ago, still in great condition. I went and I actually skipped the first two games because the reviews on them, they just weren't so hot. But all that changed when Persona 3 hit the scene back in 2007. It came in and it changed the game, winning award after award after award, and it has now gone on to become one of the most beloved entries in this long-running series. And today, in this video sponsored by Atlas, I would like to spotlight Persona 3 Reload, releasing on February the 2nd for the Xbox Game Pass, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, Windows PC, PS5, PS4, and Steam. As I said before, I myself began with Persona 3, and those reviews that I read in those magazines resonated with me so much that I actually never did go back and play those first two games in the series. So, all that being said, if you've never actually gotten to the Persona series either, then you could be like me and just start here. I mean, I personally found it to be the perfect starting point, especially because all the Personas are a self-contained story. Kind of like the Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest series. You don't need to play the previous ones to understand this one. We've seen many iterations of Persona 3 thus far. There's the original on the PS2, which was followed up shortly by the Fez version. Then it got remade over on the PSP as Persona 3 Portable. There they kind of like cut down some of the exploration aspects, but added in new social links, as well as the new option of playing as a female main character. Which you can imagine really did change up a lot of the social links quite drastically. Then, just last year, the Persona 3 Portable Remake came out, which updated some of the more archaic mechanics, but also kept the core gameplay elements intact that we all know and love. But here, Persona 3 Reload promises to reimagine the original PlayStation 2 classic, but also faithfully rebuild it, utilizing cutting-edge graphics, modern quality of life features such as fast-forwarding battles and cutscenes, quick travel throughout town, a rewind feature on your saves to ensure that you're never stuck, five different difficulty modes, full English or Japanese voice acting, a completely revamped menu screen very reminiscent of what we've seen so far in Metaphor ReFantagio, a mini-map that showcases exactly where to go and where treasures are located, and my favorite thing, a dialogue log, so that whenever a teacher asks you one of her obscure Japanese history questions, you can kind of like go back into the dialogue and try to find the answer. But then again, those same teachers will still ask you completely off-the-wall inane questions like algebraic spirals. I personally taught school for over 15 freaking years. I have a college degree. And not only have I never even heard of an algebraic spiral, I have no idea what one is. And apparently neither did Google, because it was just stumped. And I missed the question, but whatever. Once I got into combat, the first thing that I personally noticed, because I couldn't stand this back in the PS2, was that the Dragon Quest IV Syndrome had been eliminated. If you recall, back in the original versions, you couldn't directly control your party members. You could only issue them orders or tactics. But now, just like the portable version, you have full control over all of your party members during battles. And for a game this strategic, it is a welcome addition. And the battles almost play it similar to like Persona 5, insofar as whenever you hit an enemy's weakness, they get knocked down and then they lose their turn. Well, you conversely gain another turn. And if you're able to knock down all of the enemies, you'll be able to issue an all-out attack, hitting all of the foes for massive damage. Not only that, but there's also like a new sort of limit break system that's been added, where each character's gauge builds up depending on the personality. For example, Junpei's will rise by inflicting critical hits, while Yukari's will rise whenever she heals up. So with all those new changes and additions, the battle system feels much quicker, more fun, a lot more fresh, and a lot more modern, just like Persona 5. Now, every Persona game has their own separate theme, and Persona 3's theme has always been centered around like darkness and death. I mean, even the name Tartarus means the underworld in ancient Greek mythology. Hey, I learned that as a teacher, at least. And who can forget all the screaming, hysterical mothers wanting to protest this game back when it was first released because you literally summon a demon by shooting yourself in the head. So, yeah, that's death. And let's talk about Tartarus. It is no big secret that combat is my favorite part of any Shin Megami Tensei title, not just the Persona series. But I also enjoy exploring dungeons that are handcrafted and well-designed. 
but Tartarus, being random, never really felt all that handcrafted or well designed. It always felt like something that you'd play through in like Lufia 3 or Azure Dreams. But much to my surprise, I found that Tartarus has been completely redesigned and revamped from the ground up. As it does represent death and the underworld, you would expect it to be a dark, drab, dreary dungeon, and yeah, it is, but to its credit, it now has a much more natural flow along with much better pacing and tons more treasure as well as crystalline shadow energy that you can smash for items and twilight fragments. There's just so much more to do in Tartarus. Now you may not have heard of these twilight fragments. They're brand new additions in Reload, and they are scattered all over the place. Not just in Tartarus, but out in the real world too. And because of that, it really does encourage exploration of the entire town. As pretty often, you will encounter locked chests in Tartarus, and those can only be opened by spending the Twilight Fragments. In this way, it really does behoove you to not just spend like one night exploring every single floor of Tartarus that you can't move on, because if you do that, you might run out of those Twilight Fragments. It also encourages you to explore the school, as well as the rest of town, rather than just using the fast travel menu to go everywhere. That's because you're never going to know whenever you're going to find all these fragments, and they come in so handy, opening up all those chests. And speaking of exploration, this is not like the portable iteration where it was kind of like a point-and-clicky visual novel thing. You're again able to explore Tatsumi Island on foot, and each area feels alive and useful. You can work part-time jobs, raise your stats playing games, go shopping, or just like chill out with your friends and raise all of your social links. But also for the introverts out there, you could stay in, you could study, or you can spend time on the computer. The world is your oyster, and the choice is yours. But in addition to all the old, there is plenty of new, too. Like the Escapade Club Fortune Teller, whose magic can aid you in the exploration of Tartarus, or the new Net Cafe, and that lets you purchase software that you can use on the dorm computer to raise up specific stats, too. Then, to top it all off, there are major visual improvements here as well as I'm sure that you've seen in this video. There's new 3D animated cutscenes, updated music, and it's just full of whimsy. But don't get it twisted, because this is much more than just like a simple graphical overhaul of an old classic favorite. This is more of like a complete revamp of a classic to bring it in line with modern day standards and modern day sensibilities. Now, the story, the locales, the characters, all that still screams Persona 3, but the graphics, the interface, the streamlined battles, and all the other quality of life additions bring it up to be much more in line with Persona 5. And that definitely makes sense because, you know, Persona 5 was the most popular game in the entire series, and it has a rabid fan base, and players are wanting more and more and more. So Atlas is delivering that to them with this updated old classic, but is now spruced up to be more in line with Persona 5. So, if you're one of the many people out there who are chomping at the bit for more Persona as you wait impatiently for the inevitable sixth entry, then this is a great investment for you. So that's it for my spotlight of Persona 3 Reload, which is available for purchase right now using the links below for the Xbox Game Pass, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, Windows PC, PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, and Steam. Let me know what you think about the game and if you're going to be getting it. And if you like the channel, please be sure to head on over to the Patreon for early access to my videos, as well as behind the scenes photographs. The link to it is over in the video description. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.